Brothers, sisters, friends, salam alaikum. It's fantastic that we're all coming together today to remember the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But you know, 12 years ago, I'd never even heard of the Prophet Muhammad. Now I would give my last breath to defend his name, his honor, his memory. He was, in fact, the most perfect human being ever to have walked the earth. And so I was greatly honored to be asked to come here today to talk about his life and his legacy. My late father, he wasn't a Muslim and he didn't approve when I embraced Islam. Roshan alluded to some difficulties and challenges that I had faced uh, when I became a Muslim and some of the greatest challenges came from within the family home where people I loved didn't understand why I wanted to become a Muslim. And so there were often moments that caused great friction. And I remember coming home one day, having been to an event, and I had been presented with a plaque, a copper-plated plaque, and on it was the final message from Muhammad, peace be upon him. And my father, picked it out of my bag and he said, can I read this? And I said, yes. And he started to read. And his eyes filled with tears at the words that he was reading. And I would say to anyone who is asked about Islam, try and encourage that person to read the final message, because I would challenge the most Islamophobic individual to find a fault with this beautiful message that was delivered on the ninth day of Dole al-Hijjah from Mount Arafat. And after praising and thanking God our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, said before he delivered this message, O oh, people, listen well to my words, for I do not know whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you again. Therefore, listen to what I am saying to you very carefully and take these words to those who could not be present here today. O oh, people, just as you regard this month, this day, this city as sacred, so regard the life and property of every Muslim as sacred. Trust. Return the goods entrusted to you to their rightful owners. Treat others justly so that no one would be unjust to you. Can you imagine if people around the world had taken these words to their heart? and practice them. There would not be the turmoil or disunity that we are seeing unfold across the world and especially in Muslim countries today. He also said, remember that you will indeed meet your Lord and that he will indeed reckon your deeds. God has forbidden you to take usury, therefore all river obligation shall henceforth be waived. Your capital, however, is yours to keep. You will neither inflict nor suffer inequity. God has judged that there shall be no river and that all the river due shall henceforth be waived. Now, imagine if this was practiced in the world today. We wouldn't be in the middle of a recession. There wouldn't be a global financial crisis. I was listening on the radio just today, somebody talking about a triple dip recession, and we're all still reeling that we're in the middle of a double dip recession. And so 
it goes on. But the wise words of our prophet, peace be upon him, could have saved a lot of the misery that envelops us today. One of the things that really impressed me when I read about the life of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his love and support and regard for women. Women, whether they are strong or weak, he was our greatest supporter. And of course, I don't think he ever forgot that when he first received the word from the angel Jibril, it was a woman, his wife Khadija, who he turned to. When he was in that moment of doubt and crisis, he turned to Khadija. The fact that he turned to a woman, I think, shows his high regard for our strengths and our weaknesses. And he said, O oh people, it is true that you have certain rights over your women, but they also have rights over you. Remember that you have taken them as your wives only under God's trust and with his permission. If they abide by your right, then to them belongs the right to be fed and clothed in kindness. Treat your women well and be kind to them, for they are your partners. Partners as in equal partners and committed helpers. Again, this message is so relevant today because of the way that women are disrespected around the world, not just in Muslim countries, India isn't a Muslim country, but there are a large number of Muslims living there, and it has been in the news of late. And we learned that in India, a woman is raped every 20 minutes. But in America, a woman faces sexual abuse every two minutes. What is happening to our world? What is happening to the status of women? Islam is often demonized as a religion that oppresses women. But people just have to read the final farewell message of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to know that the status of women in Islam is equal in spirituality, worth, and education. But you know, it was the this next section that I'm going to read that really brought tears to my late father's eyes. And he said, all mankind is from Adam and Eve. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab, nor a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. Also, a white has no superiority over a black, nor a black has any superiority over white, except by piety and good action. And after he had read the final message, my father turned to me and he said, can I keep this and can I put it on the wall? And to me, this was the greatest breakthrough that I had had with the difficulties of becoming a Muslim in a Christian family. And my father, my late father, he, um, he put this, this farewell message up on the wall and he pointed it out to people and he would reflect on it because it was so deep, so meaningful, and so relevant to today. Although it was delivered more than 1400 years ago, it is so relevant for today. Roshan talked of the disunity in our Ummah. And it's true. And perhaps we should all read Muhammad's farewell message because we should focus on what unites us and not what divides us. 
And our identity is so simple. Not by sect, just by being a Muslim. He said, O oh, people, listen to me in earnest. Worship God, the one creator of the universe. Perform your five daily prayers, Salah. Fast during the month of Ramadan and your financial obligation of your wealth. Perform Hajj if you can afford to. And there you have it. This is what unites us. This is what binds us together as Muslims, the five pillars of Islam. Not four, not three, but five. The five pillars of Islam. And really, while we're holding on tight to the rope of Allah in one hand, we should have the Prophet, peace be upon him's farewell message in the other, because this is a message of unity. This is a message for all of us to follow. And even our enemies, even people outside of Islam, if they all followed this simple message delivered all those years ago by a man who I consider to be the greatest world leader, not of his time, but of our time, here and now, then we wouldn't be living in the conflict and turmoil we're living in today. As I say, 12 years ago, I'd never heard of his name. Now I would give my last breath to defend him, his name, his honour, and his memory, and his legacy, which is why I feel so honoured today to be able to speak about him before you. Thank you very much. Salam alaikum.